St. John's virtual service. Thank you for joining us.
Good morning. On behalf of our dean, all of my clergy colleagues, and the people of St. John's Cathedral, welcome to our virtual worship. We're so glad you've joined us. We invite you to have four instruments in front of you to help you worship. First, a book of common prayer. Secondly, we would invite you to have a candle in front of you so you may light your candle as we light a candle here as we begin our prayers today. Also, a piece of bread or a cracker, enough for you and possibly those who might be with you in your room. And fourthly, your cell phone that would be handy so that when we have a virtual offering uh, later, the dean can give you some login instructions as to how you might participate in making a contribution to our mission and ministries. Again, we're so glad that you've joined us. We begin our worship this morning with hymn 435, stanzas one through four. Continue our worship in your prayer book on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We invite you to be, please be seated for our lesson. We will read Psalm 25 
verses 1 to 8, in unison. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. Our sequence hymn is hymn number 656. We will sing the first two stanzas before the gospel and the third and fourth stanzas following the gospel. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, then we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Do you know what one of the most valuable things is in this digital world that we live in? Data. And what I mean by data is information about you, words, that would be associated with your choices and your preferences in life. The data about your digital self is valuable. I made the mistake of buying a rug online and now when I go on Facebook there are all these rug ads. I don't plan on buying any more rugs anytime soon but someone got a hold of my data and someone said, Kate likes rugs. And so all the rug companies are sending me pictures of things I don't need and can't afford. Sound familiar? Our digital selves are taking on a whole life of their own. Just a uh, a week and a half ago, I celebrated my 50th birthday and had the best 50th birthday ever, thanks to many of you. We decided that I would stand in front of the church and people could drive by and wave and they would drop off food for the food pantry. And it was awesome, so much better than another Zoom party or me sitting at home alone feeling lonely. So I stood there and I decided that day that I would put on red pants because it was my 50th birthday, you know? And I wasn't doing a service, so I didn't wear a collar. Well, we had a wonderful time, and, and the staff did a live Facebook feed, and people drove by, and I got to see so many people that I love, and all these groceries were given. It was a big success, except something happened to my digital self. There was a woman who saw this film of me bending down to cars, greeting people in my red pants, and she said, that dean shouldn't be a priest, she's a harlot. She's wearing red pants. And then a member of our congregation who's quite articulate and very much the feminist said, well, why shouldn't she be able to wear red pants if she wants to wear red pants? She is, after all, a woman priest, and they started to go at it on my Facebook page. I thought to myself, I don't know if I want my digital self to be identified as the woman that wore the red pants, and whether that's acceptable or not. But that was what was happening until it got kind of started to get out of hand, so I deleted the conversation. All these words about us. All these political slogans. All these terms to identify who you are and who I am. To define us. Your digital self. When I served a parish back in Kansas, we had a 
battle going on with the Roman Catholic Church across the street. Because you see, when they had an event, they would park in our parking lot without permission. And then so when we had an event, we would park in their parking lot without permission. This got kind of heated back and forth, parking and parking, until finally my vestry met and they said, I know, let's put pro-choice bumper stickers on all their cars. And then somebody said, no, wait a minute. How does, that wouldn't work because not all Roman Catholics are pro-life and not all Episcopalians are pro-choice. We tried to have a battle of the bumper stickers, but none of the words worked. So we gave up, thanks be to God, because it wasn't a very Christian idea in the first place. If you had to define yourself with words, what words would you choose? In this gospel for today, Jesus goes to the temple. There are the scribes and the elders, and there's a big crowd of people. The scribes and the elders are politicians, and they want to trap Jesus with words. They say to him publicly, by whose authority are you doing all these things? They want Jesus to reveal himself or to claim that he speaks for God and so they can begin to accuse him of things and maybe the crowd will rise up, which it eventually will, but it wasn't the right time. And Jesus didn't want to fall into their trap. He was too smart. So instead of letting them trap him with words and define him, he says to them, listen, I'll, I'll tell you by whose authority I do these things. If you tell me something, I'm going to ask you a question. When John the Baptist was baptized, was he baptized from on high? Was it from heaven or was it just from earth? Well, you can just see these scribes and elders getting together in a huddle and they're saying, wait, if we say this, people will think that we believed in John the Baptist, but then we didn't accept him, so they'll be mad. But if we say that, it, that he was only baptized and it was just an earthly thing, well, then the crowd who loves John the Baptist will get mad at us and they'll, they'll criticize us. So we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. What are we going to say? We're trapped with words. Jesus is so smart. Instead of answering their question, he forces them to understand what it's like when someone tries to define you in a way that you don't feel is right, and they cannot answer his question. We don't know is all they can say. And I know that it was very hard for those know-it-all scribes and elders to say they didn't know. You know that must have been humbling for them, and that was a good thing. And then Jesus gives us a parable. Two sons are asked to go out into the vineyard. One of them says, no, I won't go, but ends up going. One of them says, I will go, but doesn't go. Now, which one of these two was more faithful? The one who talked the talk or the one who walked the walk? And obviously, everyone says, the one who went into the vineyard. You see, what Jesus is trying to tell us is that no matter what you say, or what your politics are, or how you define yourself, or how many slogans you put out there on Facebook and social media, it's not important if you don't walk the walk. As the election approaches in this country, we are more and more divided into black and white, red and blue. We simplify everything as if all these complex issues could be boiled down into a right and a wrong. It's preposterous. And then we define each other by these absurd categories that we have created.
And what happens is we don't know each other anymore. We are defined by labels instead of seeing each other as human beings and we stop listening. And that, my friends, can get very dangerous. As this election approaches, if we define each other solely by our politics and our slogans and our words, we cease to listen to one another and we are in danger of becoming just like the scribes and the elders and the Pharisees. So I ask you, don't give me any words. I don't want to hear a slogan. But do tell me this. Do you serve the less fortunate than you? Do you take time out of your life to help those in need, to do something that is solely not for you, but for someone else? Do you do that? Or a great thing to look at in terms of action and not words is your budget. Where does your money go? Because if you're not giving your money to something you believe in, then your words don't mean anything. If you're not giving your time and your money and walking the walk, what does any of it mean? Why does your opinion matter if you just stand there speaking it but do nothing? Then we become just like that laborer who says, oh yes, I'm going to do this work and I'm going to be for this and for that, but doesn't go actually into the field and work. All over Jacksonville, we have been forming these discipleship groups as quickly as I can where people will gather on Zoom and they will say vows together, seven vows. They vow to pray every day, to read the Bible, to spend one hour a week serving the poor. Poor could be physically not able, monetarily not well, one hour a week to work towards the tithe, towards giving 10% of your income towards the church or anything that is of godly purpose. To pray for each other, to discern God's will. Who do we really follow? Is it the next president of the United States, a political party, or is it Jesus? And if it's Jesus, then maybe we should think more like St. Francis who said, preach loudly, occasionally use words, <laughs> speak by what you do, not what you say. Particularly now in this digital world, we are awash with statements. But none of that means anything if we don't walk the walk. Look over your time. Look over your budget. Look over your life. Let's do this together. No more talking just doing. Amen. Now I invite you to stand and turn in your prayer book to page 358 and let us recite our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, one God the, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, 
maker, maker of, of heaven and, and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Please respond with the words, hear our prayer. As we pray together, please light the candle that sits beside your computer or television. Gracious and eternal God, you have created the human race in all its beauty and diversity. Bring to an end this pandemic that we may emerge safely and with great reverence, greater reverence for human life and also bring an end to the fires on the West Coast in order to help preserve this precious earth that you have given us. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You sent the Holy Spirit upon us to teach us how to speak the language of others. Help us to listen to one another and learn from one another. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Restore to health all those who battle the coronavirus or any other illness. Heal them and bless them. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless those who have died. Welcome them into your loving embrace, remembering especially Don Farshing. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Be present with those who suffer from economic hardship. Help us all to become bold innovators, steadfast in strength, a people of courage, hope, and generosity. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Descend upon us as you descended upon the disciples in the upper room, that we may be so filled with your presence that we emerge to change the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. O God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imagination, so compel our action, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory, and for the welfare of all your children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The, the peace, peace of the Lord, Lord be always with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord always be with you. Well, good morning, everyone. The peace be with you. It is so good to have you here with us in this virtual worship service today. So much is going on here at the cathedral, and we hope that you will check out our website for all the details of classes, daily worship, 
and subscribe to our newsletter at jackscathedral.org. We continue to gather groceries for the St. Mary's Food Pantry in Springfield, and we need those to continue to come. Thank you so much for all the groceries you have already given, but continue to remember when you go to the grocery store, just get one extra bag of food and uh, bring it over to the church. We will deliver it to the food pantry. Our fall classes started Wednesday and Sundays. See the website for details. Lots of great classes going on. And next Sunday is a special Sunday. I mentioned St. Francis. We all loved St. Francis, who lived in the 1100s and 1200s, loved all the creatures of God. And traditionally, on the first Sunday of October, we remember St. Francis by blessing pets. So this year, we are going to host a special service outside at 9 o'clock here at the cathedral in the cathedral park where the labyrinth is. Bring your animals, bring your mask to wear, and come and participate with us in an outdoor, socially distant worship as we bless our pets. We will also celebrate St. Francis inside at 10 o'clock for those of you who'd rather not have your pets right next to you when you worship God. For next week's virtual service, if you want to worship with us online, just remember to have your pet with you during the service and also if you can, send us a picture of you with your pet. Send it to Nancy Purcell at npurcell at jackscathedral.org. The altar flowers today are given to the glory of God and in thanksgiving to all the ongoing ministries of St. John's Cathedral by Barbara Pfizer. They're beautiful. Thank you, Barbara. And last but not least, if you would like to donate to the cathedral, at this time, you can text the number 73256 and then write in the message J-A-X Cathedral, dollar sign, and the amount. So 73256, Jack's Cathedral, dollar sign, and the amount. We're so grateful that you have tuned in with us today. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. My friends, as we offer this bread and wine and all of our resources unto the Lord, we invite you to do the same thing at home, taking to your center your bread or your cracker, those who are around you made possibly in front of the screen. And as we lift this bread and wine, we're lifting all of our gratitude and all that God has given us 
um, and all the compelling nature of offering that and giving it for the sake of God and God's world. All things come of thee, O Lord, and, and of thine own, own have we given thee. Amen. We continue in your prayer book with Eucharistic Prayer B that's found on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done, done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this this day day our daily bread, bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And and lead us not into into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. As we break this bread, we invite you to break your own and take it at your home, sharing it with yourself and those around you as we share this holy meal Uh, with each other here in the sanctuary. Our post-communion prayer is found in your prayer book on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal Eternal God, God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you have have graciously graciously accepted us as living members members of your your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ. and you have have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament sacrament of his body and blood. blood. Send Send us us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we have but little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us this day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.
Thank you for joining us for our virtual service. We hope to see you again next week.